Each and every PLC built for a purpose targeting a certain location and application. And usually it would fit in some situation much better than others. That's why we have seen the role of Solution Architect to support you finding your best match for your situation and application. PLC hardware is no more high-end know-how, and the major competition is in the software side, which set the major players like Siemens, Rockwell, and Schneider apart from the competition with the Chinese brand. Most of us are moving for the lean processes to reduce the waste of resources, so it is useless to invest in low-cost hardware from unknown brands and then consume much more engineering and troubleshooting time. So always the best solution is the fast and cost-effective one. Today I would review M221 from a perspective of real situation as I have installed the first M221 in the Middle East and consumed over 400 pieces till now. Considering that, I have consumed the same amount or even more from Siemens S7-1200. Modicon M221 is a small and compact PLC. But is it good enough? Let's find out. Today I would review the Modicon M221 and show its potentials compared to the Siemens S7-1200 which uh, the VLC that changed the market completely almost like 9 to 10 years back as a revolutionary product from the S7-200 why? because in the old days we were using the medium size VLCs not for the I.O. counts or the application size but only for one reason which is having a decent software feature to build and rebuild the application in a faster and more accurate way. Actually, Siemens pushed the level of the competition by the S7-1200, which is currently, I think, the most selling PLC in the market, not because of the hardware itself, but only for the software, which is Tia Portal, that gives us a new era where the small and compact PLCs are having most of high-end PLC software features. And that's why I will keep this S7-1200 as a reference point for any future videos uh, of comparison or review for the compact PLCs. Back to the line, the M221 PLC. If you haven't seen the close-up shots and the intro video, the link will be upside here and in the description. M221 is from the compact categories. That means it's loaded with the tons of features like the fast counter for encoders or pulsating flow meters input like the parallel flow meters and having furthermore built-in IOs and power supply so it is loaded with the built-in features just to make it a much more convenient or much more cost-effective solutions but normally I like to call these categories as the jack of all trades master of nothing Simply, you will never find the compact PLC with the hot standby uh, capabilities or even the module uh, hot swapping or even... And most of them, they are not having channel-to-channel -channel isolation for the analog modules. The M221 is available in uh, two versions, the standard version and the bulk version. As you can see here, and there is no big difference or a major difference except the book version is much more uh, compact and much more consistent looking with the IOs. And the standard version is available with the AC supply. The first uh, option here is available with the AC supply and plug-in modules available in the CPU. And actually I'm not using the plug-in modules. Uh, but we have here one sample of plugin modules. It's actually the same concept as you see here, the S7-1200. We have a plugin module uh, for the Modbus RTU. And, and furthermore, we have relay outputs. It is, again, not available in the book version. So back again to the point for the size-wise. The M221-32 IOs. I think it is the most compact PLC I have ever seen uh, in my entire life because compared to the S7-1200 which is 14 IOs uh, 
as you can see here, the 32 IOs uh, M2D1 is much more compact compared to the 14 IOs, the CPU1212 from Siemens. So if the size uh, matters, then the M221 is the winner in this category. Back to the point. What are the major potentials of the M221 compared to the S7-1200? I will mention eight major uh, difference or potential for the M221. And if you find one of these is relevant to your work, then the M221 will, uh, the M221 will be the winner in this case. So the first one, uh, the first point is the M221 is having the USB programming and uh, firmware upgrade port. Uh, as you see here, it is mini USB Type-B, which is uh, resolving the hassle of IBs and changing the network. And sometimes you would face uh, some abnormality or difficulties uh, with the connection to the Ethernet, like what's happening with the S7-1200, especially once you enable the global securities and changing between software versions. And I think uh, most of you at least face this uh, at least once uh, while working with S7-1200. The second point I want to mention here, which is again relevant to the USB port, is the, the powerless mode. Actually, uh, this CPU can be powered for programming and firmware upgrade through the USB port itself without having any supply uh, input PC or AC. So I think we can test uh, this feature right now. So I think I have, yes, I have here, uh, I have here two types of cable. Uh, the first one here is the Schneider uh, cable. Uh, I will just show you the part number here. And the other one is a standard cable from the market. And both of them are same, so I would uh, advise you to purchase a standard cable rather than wasting money in the Schneider one. So uh, I would connect here the USB and then connect it to the controller. The controller should be should flash uh, green. That means you are now in the uh, powerless mode. And this feature is very useful for my workflow. And sometimes I'm sending the PLC directly from my office uh, as a replacement, or even send it with a technician for small jobs. So. It's actually uh, saving my time and rather than sending someone to the workshop or even sending a guy with a laptop to the site. Point number three is the built-in serial port. As you see here, we have uh, two ports. One is the uh, Ether Ethernet port, which is supporting the Modbus TCB and Ethernet IB slave. And uh, we have a serial port here, which is supporting the Modbus uh, RTU. Uh, and here is the... A, a sort of application whenever you have any integration with uh, any existing equipment like generators, um, uh, booster panels, or whatever uh, manufacturer panels, most of them they are having the Modbus R2 as it is the simplest and easiest uh, protocol available. Or even in, uh, or if you have integration with the BMS system, normally you will find they have the Modbus uh, R2. What is the potential of this one uh, compared to the S7 that actually the S7 is not having built-in serial port. It's only having the Profinet uh, port here or Ethernet port here uh, supporting Profinet and Modbus TCB. And you have to add the CP1241, the serial port. And the point here is that the cost of this uh, communication board is almost half of the CPU of the M221. So if you have any integration point of contact with the generator or other equipment, then the M221 uh, will be the winner in this case. Forgot to mention uh, small things uh, related to the serial board. This serial board is available with the 5 volt if you are planning to use uh, 
TMH2 GDB display unit or even the Majelis XPTN or even the XBTRT HMIs. Point number four, which is one of the major potentials of the M221 itself, is the pre-wired system. As a part of the trend to minimize the resources or the manpower as it's cost more than the hardware itself, M221 offer can be joined with the telefast pre-wire system. That gives you the option to minimize the numbering, the wiring assembly time and mistakes. And actually it is one of my favorite solutions here. Uh, as you see simply by HE10 uh, connector, we can connect the PLC directly with the uh, Telefast 16 channel uh, terminal block and you're ready to go, your wiring is done. Point number five, uh, and it is one of the major points again, the expansion modules. As you see here, the M221 is having seven IOs uh, on the rack. And the added value here is we have the expansion uh, module option. So you can expand, simply you can expand with these pair of uh, expansion uh, to furthermore seven modules. And the connection here is simply uh, network cable. And this option is not available in the S7-1200 as there is no expansion for the IOs. And you have to go by for remote IOs by communication like the ET200S or SP. Uh, and then here the cost will be much higher because the head of the ET200S is much more than the cost of the CPU of the M221. So if you are looking for further or more IOs, then the M221 is the cost uh, effective solution. Point number six, which is uh, not a major point, but worth mentioning is that the CPU here is having a hardware switch for the run and uh, stop. And if you are a user of S7 uh, 1200, um, sometimes with a several power failure, it will lead to stop the CPU. And you have to use the software to put the CPU back again in the run mode. Point number seven, which is a major point for certain application, is the real-time clock or the RTC. And my concern here is the accuracy. So whenever you work with a real-time clock, you have to know that you have something called the RTC drift or the real-time, uh, the RTC accuracy. In the M221, you have the accuracy is less than 30 seconds per month, where in the S7-1200, it is 60 seconds per month. It's a, all are plus and minus. And here is a unexpected downside for Siemens controller as the RTC accuracy is not improving even if you move with a higher controller like the S7-1500 still remain in 60 seconds per month. Where in Schneider, it is significantly improving if you move with a new controller, the M262. Uh, here the RTC accuracy is uh, 10 seconds per month, which is a very good uh, number or value. Having 60 seconds per month is very significant for certain applications like the irrigation. And in this case, I would recommend the M221 over the S7-1200. I know some of you will tell me that we can uh, synchronize the time with the NTP protocol GPS clock where we have the, uh, a video discussing all kind of uh, clock synchronization for the PLCs. But sometimes you have a simple application where you have only the PLC handling a certain job. So you don't have other sources to synchronize or adjust the clock. And here we have something worth mentioning is that the, the M221 is using the battery. Uh, and this battery is necessary for the RTC or uh, retention of the RTC while the S7-1200 is using the super capacitor which is again maintenance free 
it is only capacitor charging and this is charging with the power and and here something worth uh, mentioning as well that the battery is will last like one to two years based on the temperature and you have the system bit just to show you or give you the error that you are running in a low battery uh, while the super capacitor it will discharge within 12 to 20 days it's mentioned minimum 20, uh, 12 days uh, retaining retaining the data so again if you if you have an application uh, like uh, wells running with the generators and you are shut down the well for a long time then the into one with a battery is a better solution for you and for me uh and then for me i would prefer the super capacitor the maintenance free option in this case point eight the last point we have today is the analog input filtering i have some issues with the siemens three level uh, of uh, smoothness weak medium and strong for the analog channels uh, sometimes it's not sufficient to handle the noise uh, of dirty supply and here is a real example from a mining field where I was not able to handle the analog uh, smoothness at the strong settings. I know most of you, they will ask me, uh, you can fix this problem whenever you have the clean air, but sometimes you don't have access to the clean airs as it is even not exist. On the other hand, uh, the M221 is having a much better way and, and filtration settings for the analog channels. And I have verified the, this issues uh, many times in the real situations that I have to relay on the M221 rather than the S7-1200. At the end, as a summary, which one is better? From uh, my perspective, the PLC is a combination of hardware and software. And uh, I think the M221 is having a better uh, hardware features on the other hand, the S7-1200 is having much better software features. So the application will be the judge. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.